Egyptian just hope that you enjoyed this rare and infamous moment that combines a first-rate disaster with genuine historical significance. But now it's time to take a deep breath and get those cameras out as we prepare to temporally reset you to one of the most fantastic catastrophes in history. Are you ready? Everyone, and welcome to the Time Shifters podcast. This is Christopher, here as always with my awesome co-host, Tom. I'm being awesome today, apparently. <laughs> You're always awesome, sir. Always awesome. Why, thank you. How have you been? Oh, not too bad. Lots going on. Busy at work, busy at home. Happy to have the... Uh, the last time we, we recorded, we were in the middle of some renovations, so that's done. So Yeah, excellent. Yeah, there was definitely a difference in sound when you have a giant mattress behind your head. <laughs> I'll work on simulating a mattress behind my head in the near future. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. That'd be awesome. I've had a lot going on. I had a lot of um, just stuff going on in my personal life. Didn't, bit of drama. So I had a little bit of drama. Haven't, did not get a chance to do a whole lot of movie or TV watching. I did a little. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to bring up, because you mentioned it, I think, last episode, the mm -hmm. Godzilla Kong, the New Empire. Yes. Got a chance to catch that. Yes. <laughs> I found it really boring. <laughs> <laughs> I I really didn't enjoy it. No. I, it was, I mean, you compared it to like a lot of the 70s Godzilla films. Uh -huh. I, I really didn't see it other than the kind of ridiculous nature of the whole thing there's just so much see yeah but see that's what why i'm making that correlation with the 70s one like the the underlying story that you would watch on any godzilla movie in the 70s you really didn't care uh, you wanted to get to the monsters of which this one had plenty of monster action and it was all ridiculous, <laughs> which parallels with everything that happened action-wise in the 70s as well. So I thought it was a nice little beat, but clearly it didn't strike you the way that the old ones do. Yeah, I don't know why, because I'll watch those 70s ones and I'll I'll smile and laugh. <laughs> and, and even when it's ridiculous, even when, you know, Godzilla's doing his tail fly and, uh, or, and <laughs> using his atomic breath to zoom through the sky and whatever, I'll <laughs> shake my head and groan, but I'll still chuckle at it. This one, I just, when you got Godzilla and Kong running around like they're the flipping Avengers... <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's it. It didn't feel like a kaiju film. It felt like another Marvel movie. Maybe, maybe for you, it's the level of uh, uh, of. I mean, the effects are better, um, so it, it's giving you everything in CGI at this point. So it's just giving you all that feel. Whereas the good old buddy monster movies, where it was a physical person in a rubber suit on a terrible set <laughs> maybe that just does it for you a little bit more i mean come on kong and godzilla pull off a full-on sprint <laughs> at whatever it is that they're charging after i'm like that that's just ridiculous no absolutely no there's nothing in this film that isn't ridiculous no um the the, the idea that this uh Oh, even the characters are ridiculous. The the vet, quote unquote, the veterinarian, yeah, who can somehow take a bunch of broken parts and uh, create a mechanized hand for Kong in a matter of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had already built it. Why they only ha they had it for the right for his uh, what was it? It was his right hand, right? Yeah, it was the right hand. And that's the one that they had ready to go. <laughs> they had it built. What I I missed that you, part. You did. So. Uh, it, it was back at the station in, in um, whatever they call the um, the subterranean Earth area. They had a they had a monarch station down there, and 
one of the prosthetics was was stored there, and it just so happened to be the one for the right hand. <laughs> uh, I completely missed that they had something. You must have oh. no dot nodded off during that part. <laughs> Maybe I, I thought it was the same thing he was using to pull the tooth er- earlier on. No, no, it wasn't that. Oh. All right. No, they they had talked about uh, the, like the these enhancement things that they were preparing for Kong already. Uh, <laughs> because yeah, why wouldn't you want your eighty foot high ape to have bionic enhancements? Yeah, but see, they were busy already selling him as the hero of humanity, the Titan that was on their side. So uh, okay, it's a whole thing. Cle- clearly, you need to go back and rewatch. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I do, but unfortunately, it is not going to be anytime soon. And, you know, I did comment on when I posted it that I buy, if it's a Godzilla film, typically, yeah, I'll buy it. Right. This one, I don't really feel the need to add to my collection because it's not really a Godzilla film. Kind of no. In fact, actually, it is very Kong centric to begin with. Yeah, no, uh, this this is a this is a Kong film, and, and here's the thing: while I'm teasing and playing and enjoying your pain, uh, <laughs> the the uh, uh, the thing that disappoints me with this one is all the other ones, even though they kind of they kept sliding a little toward the uh, the uh, ridiculous. Um, they were kind of taking the material more seriously, and then they introduced the Monarch series, which is very closely tied to to that movie line, and that is supposed to be taking it seriously, and then they introduced this, and supposedly Monarch will get another shot still, so I'm like, mm, how does this fit in with all of that? Because this is just too bizarre. What I'll do as far as giving it a rewatch is maybe I'll uh, I'll I'll request it from the library when it comes to home video ah. or something and watch it that way. There you go. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention and kind of touch back on because I think I mentioned it just last episode. I was watching that uh, the old Peter Gunn series. Yes. And I was just telling you how impressed I was with the fact that it's pretty dark, pretty violent a little sexually charged yes, and everything. a lot for 50s. Very much for 50s. But it, it just, in the episodes that I've watched since we recorded, I am really impressed with this show's uh, effort on continuity. Mm-hmm. I mean, and even between episode to episode. Yeah, how so? There was a, a series of episodes that uh, the one episode starts with uh, the police lieutenant one of the characters in the show is, is shot. Mm-hmm. You know, he's gunned down outside of uh, the precinct and he's in the hospital. Well, for the next two episodes, he's still in the hospital. That's awesome. Now, as it turns out, it's because the actor was actually hit by a car, had a broken leg. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, silver linings. <laughs> and they actually, I, I, from what I was reading, they actually brought a camera to, they filmed it in his hospital room. Nice. Any scenes that with him in it, it was in his hospital room. But, hey, I was just, I'm impressed that they didn't just find a way to write him out for a few episodes. Right. Or, or, or B, just like take a hiatus in filming until he recovered right. or something. And in and, and a later episode after that, uh, there is a, uh, a jazz club. Yeah. where Peter hangs out, pretty much uses as his office. It's where his girlfriend sings. Well, a couple of heavies come in, and they're trying to push a mother, who is the woman that owns the place. It's mothers. Yeah. So they try to uh, push her into uh, paying protection money, and she won't hear of it. So they're like, well, maybe we need to show you what we'll be protecting you from. And they trash the place, and there ends up being a big brawl. There's a big fight. The bar is destroyed, knocked over, and everything. And at the end of the episode, she talks about, ah, oh, well, maybe we'll, you'll just have to remodel. I mean, I've been talking about remodeling, et cetera, et cetera. Episode after, they're remodeling. <laughs> <laughs> I am just, I am so used, I am so used to the magic reset. Yes. At, at the end of every episode, there's always that, the magic reset that when the next episode starts, 
all the damage is done. Right, yeah. Or, 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 I mean, all the damage is cleaned up, and it's all fixed and all better. Yep, and we all move on with our lives, and it's like it never happened. Uh, yeah, I'm so used to that. So seeing it in this, it's just, <laughs> it's blowing me away. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, there were some episodes uh, early on where, you know, Gunn gets himself beat up. And he spends the rest of the episode with bruises and cuts on his face. <laughs> I'm like, and our hero's got a bruise, and he and he keeps the bruise through the whole show. What? <laughs> wow. No, that's that's fantastic. Because, yeah, especially given the, the the time period that this takes place in, uh, I, that you didn't see that kind of level of attention to detail in, in all the works out of the '50s and '60s. No, not at all. And so it, it's it's really impressing me. And I, I almost feel silly to be sitting here being so blown away by, <laughs> well, by this 67-year-old you know, show. When we have issues in this day and age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but to have that kind of continuity within an episode and then what from episode to episode. Right, is just, no, that, the carryover is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, especially because for the most part, the stories. You know, you you never hear them talk about this last case or, right. you know, all that is kind of just that ends at the end of the episode and a new story starts. But they have the surroundings continue like that is just, uh, yeah, it's it's impressive. That's very cool. I like that. And that is actually on Amazon Prime. I couldn't I thought it was oh, with perfect. the freebie. It is on Prime. Uh, there's like one ad in the uh, ad break in the middle of every episode. Yeah, well, that's just part of Prime these days. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's not terrible. Another thing available on Prime that I discovered while flipping to get the gun and everything is yeah. this might interest you. The Wild Wild West is on there. I saw you post that, and I can't wait to start digging into that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show so much. Yeah, yeah, I thought you'd uh, be interested in that. Yeah, because that anytime I bring it up to people, go, "Oh, you mean the movie with Will Smith?" And I'm like, "Shut your mouth! <laughs> <laughs> That's not the Wild Wild West." Yeah, I'm kind of looking. I've only uh, knocked out an episode uh, so far. I haven't had a chance to really dive into it. But it going back first season, black and white, the whole setup. Uh, so yeah, it's a. That's a fun series. Yeah, no, I can't wait to dig into that one. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I've been watching. And uh, I maybe that seems like a lot, but for me that that ain't <laughs> I, much. I, I know that's a cutback for you. <laughs> 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 no, uh, other than uh, I at, at, before the show, I mentioned uh, my son and I got to go see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and I I'm I'm very enamored with the series, uh, the whole thing, and since this one is essentially a reset um, of a sort, because it j- jumps forward in time uh, a mm, little bit okay. more, uh, to uh, it harkens back to some of the Planet of the Apes movies, the original ones, from the concept that there are periods where you might get a story out of one era and then we'll jump around and we'll have a story in another era further down in the future or like when we have the ones that jump back to the past. Um, So this is, instead of doing the jumping around in time, they just advance it forward. So we're post-Caesar in this new film and it's establishing more the world that you, the version of the Planet of the Apes, you kind of, we're not quite to where we see the very first original Planet of the Apes movie, but we're getting there. We're closing in on that time frame. Okay. That, see, all this is is new to me. Yes. I have I as I mentioned in previous shows, I just never got into the the new series of the films, and I, I after seeing the trailer for this one, I'm really kind of jonesing to do that. And now that they're available on like multiple streaming platforms easily to watch. I think I, I will definitely uh, check the, the films out. No, I can't wait to hear, hear your perspective on them. Cause I know how much you like the original stuff. Um, yeah, I do really enjoy and, those. And, and I, 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 
I need you to appreciate that and then sit it aside and let this be its own thing while it pays perfect homages to some of the past. Uh, what it does with this is re- I-, I like it a lot. And then this one, the fact that they jump far enough ahead. We are literally the planet of the apes at this point. There are only two human characters that even show up. And okay. they are not really the thrust of this. It's the relationships and the, the stuff going on in just the ape world. It was yeah. really a lot of fun. What I need is a lot more free time. Well, because I want to watch all of these films, and then I just listened to another podcast where they were talking about uh, the original Planet of the Apes right. film, and it got me like, ah, oh, you know, it's been a long time since I've watched that, and I kind of wanted to watch that. <laughs> I just, I don't have enough hours in my day. And then, and then I know you're just dying to visit, revisit the Marky Mark version. No, that one I can <laughs> easily skip. Yeah, not not one of my favorites either. <laughs> yeah, that that is one of the main reasons I never got into the new series of films. Yeah, you're I just that one I was, was enough to kind of jackknife things. You're kind of like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but burn no. me once, shame on you. <laughs> yeah, no. In this case. It, Shake it off. Let the new come in and let it wash over you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, I will check him out. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I've managed to do is uh, um, I've been a my son in particular is a fan of the Big Bang Theory. I, I, I watched all of it straight through and with him in the house. Uh, I have seen all twelve seasons over and over again, and then we've gotten into uh, the Young Sh- Sheldon series as well. Uh, which just very recently wrapped up the series. Um, and when, of course, you're telling a prequel story of a, of a character from... This even breaks other rules, because how often do you see a, this done with a sitcom? <laughs> but <laughs> they did it. They did it very well. Um, and while I'm not going to get into my uh, a- any kind of review of the series or this season in particular. What I did want to talk about, which was very interesting, is one of the things that was always going to overshadow this series is because we know the history of the character from Big Bang Theory, uh, we know that Sheldon's father dies before he goes off to the university, ends up teaching it, or not teaching it, but uh, he's a researcher there. Mm -hmm. Um. So we know that's going to happen, and for this series to kind of play out its arc, we know that has to happen. We have to get that story. So there's knowing it, and then there's living it. So when it finally happens, they have this amazing episode that they titled Funeral, uh, where it is the funeral of his father and all that, and everything that goes along with that. But they so nicely with all of the characters that are involved in the series, they find different ways to touch on various ways people move through their grief process. It's very effective, and it I, I am not afraid to say, my son and I were in tears watching this, wow. this episode. And when you think about it, it's just supposed to be a, a family sitcom, and they were that effective, and not only effective in making you feel it, but then giving you ways to be okay with how you feel about it was just, it was very impressive. I, I, I rather enjoyed that quite a lot. Oh, that's that's really good. It's great to hear. It's not a series. I have not watched a single second of it. Honestly, if you just need something for family time, I really recommend it. It's actually quite funny. Annie Potts is the, uh, the his meemaw, which is what he calls his grandma. She's amazing. And then... Lori Metcalf uh, of Roseanne fame and all that, which is funny. Big Bang Theory was a dumping ground from a lot of Roseanne actors. Cause, <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, no, uh, when she makes the appearance, the fact that the young Sheldon series hired her daughter to play the younger version of her. Oh, I had no idea. Yes. And she, it, like, I mean, 
to her credit and all, she looks and sounds just like a young Lori Metcalf. She was amazing. She was perfect for the series, and she's an impressive actor in her own right. You don't need to even worry about Lori Metcalf and all of this. She's amazing. So everybody in the show is great. Uh, actually, the show, as I understand it, the show did so well, it's spinning its own series off. Oh, wow. They're going to follow his brother and his brother's family going forward. And I'm like, and actually, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's um, my son and my and his grandparents watch the show. Yeah. They, they pile them up on the DVR and whenever he's in town or whatever, they go and binge it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. So uh, I'm guessing they have a few episodes to... Uh, uh, saved for him for the next time he, he he's home uh yeah i would imagine so if that's how they watch him uh then yeah he'll probably finish out the series the next time yeah yeah that's uh that's awesome yeah they but they all really enjoy it i don't know how they got onto it because he's never seen a single big bang theory so i'm not sure how they uh stumbled on that particular series but it's something that they uh they all enjoy well and it's one of those uh, honestly um Having seen Big Bang Theory, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of homage to that. Straight up, I mean, um, Jim Parsons is narrates it, who played Sheldon in Big Bang Theory. He narrates throughout. In fact, the series essentially is supposed to be leading up to him. He it's his remembrances as he's writing a memoir. Ah, uh, uh, of course. So, uh, and, and they find little ways to it, fill put, put little uh, nods to the prior series, but. You don't even need it. Uh, like you can watch Young Sheldon and enjoy it for what it is. And actually, I've had to tell some uh, some friends and all that because uh, their their younger daughters really love watching the series. And I said I actually had to go. Okay, <laughs> you both have some serious feelers among you, uh, so I, I want to caution you as you approach the end of the series. If you're if your little girls haven't watched it yet you might want to watch it with them because they're going to feel a lot of things and since they uh since this is a series unto itself and, and so much different than what big bang theory was um it's easy to get kind of sucked in and actually feel like you're in with the family you want you're vested nice so, yeah all right. Well, I guess with that, we'll go ahead and take a break. We'll listen to a promo from another podcast. And when we get back, we're going to travel to 1993 to check out Demolition Man. I'm Alan. And I'm James. And we're the hosts of your new favorite podcast, The Test of Time. On our show, we talk about our favorite movies from the past, mostly from the 80s and 90s. There's Forrest Gump, which I hate. We can have Bernie's, which I hate. And plenty of movies we both love, but still love to talk about, like Risky Business, Swingers, E.T., Big, and more. We talk about the movies and debate if they still hold up today. In other words, do they stand the test of time? So check us out. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all the usual podcast places. Check out our website, testoftimepod.com, for a full list. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Test of Time Pod. It's test of time to subscribe. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. It's the test of time. James and Allen have to say, do the movies you love still hold up today? At the end of a century, ravaged by violence, a society of perfect order will arise. Criminals will be frozen and reprogrammed in cryogenic prisons. The prisoners are ice cubes. Their criminal instincts are being reprogrammed as they sleep. Aggression and deviant behavior will be totally eliminated. He's a criminal the likes of which you have never seen. In a bad time, he was the worst. I'm gonna love running this place. 
but in the year 2032. This morning, Simon Phoenix escaped from this cryo facility. And we are, quite frankly, not equipped to deal with the situation. Amidst a world of peace and calm. We're police officers. We're not trained for this kind of violence. How was the fiendish Simon Phoenix apprehended back in the 20th? In the end, it took just one man. John Spartan. You mean the demolition man? The conditions of your parole are full reinstatement into the SAPD and immediate assignment to the apprehension of Simon Phoenix. Two mortal enemies. Just dropped in to say hi! From another time. Pass is over, John! Time for something new and improved! Oh, hell. Will be unleashed on a future that isn't big enough for the both of them. Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, Demolition Man. Demolition Man stars Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, Sandra Bullock, and Nigel Hathorne. In the year 1996, while apprehending the psychopath Simon Phoenix, L.A. cop John Spartan is accused of allowing the deaths of 30 hostages. He is sentenced to cryogenic rehabilitation along with Phoenix. Flash forward to the year 2032. Phoenix escapes during a parole hearing. Now possessing knowledge of the inner workings of the 21st century society and its computer systems, he begins a murderous rampage throughout the city. The city of San Angeles, a megalopolis formed when L.A., San Diego, and Santa Barbara merged, is a utopia-like society led by Dr. Raymond Cocteau. Crime is nearly unheard of and murder a thing of the distant path. Figuring desperate times require desperate measures, SAPD officer Lenina Huxley thaws out Spartan and has him reinstated as an officer in order to help take Phoenix down. Spartan has to navigate this sterile and oppressive new world while trying to teach Huxley and her colleagues that not all things done in the 20th are as bad as they think. How long has it been since you watched this one, Tom? Uh, interestingly enough, a month. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Pretty recent. Yeah, no, I, I had actually revisited this one just for the heck of it uh, not that long ago. <laughs> Nice. It has been ages since I've watched this film. Really? I think I probably watched it when it first came to home video. Okay. Yeah, I I might have watched this on VHS kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was probably the last time I watched it. I remembered quite a bit about it. It's one of those films that, you know, if it's really good, yeah. you enjoy it, you remember a, a little bit more. So I did remember quite a bit from it, and um, it was great to <laughs> to watch it again. <laughs> it it was one of the things I I remembered enjoying it. I honestly didn't remember how good it was. Yeah, no, I actually while, while sitting to watch this again, I actually introduced it to my son <laughs> just just because I wanted a, a a fresh perspective in the room and I wanted to see how. Yeah how or if he was even amused by this <laughs> i um i introduced it to my wife she had not seen it before oh, at really all. and i asked her if she was interested in watching it and she kind of read the synopsis and like she's like yeah i guess <laughs> and she ended up really enjoying it because it was not at all what she was expecting yeah she was really expecting it to be a more action cop film yeah she was not expecting the comedy. Oh, okay. And she wasn't expecting all the humor that was throughout the film. You know, I, I was reading about the development of this thing and was kind of surprised. And it's one of those things where now that you've seen the film and you've seen it with Stallone and Snipes, you can't imagine anybody else. No. And apparently there was quite a few different people that were kind of uh, sought after to take the starring role. Apparently, uh, Steven uh, Seagal was originally attached. Oh, really? As a leading actor. Yeah. And Jean-Claude Van Damme had been offered the part of uh, Phoenix. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, God, a Seagal Van Damme movie. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it would have done as well. 
Yeah, I, I, and was it still going to have the other supporting cast with those two in the lead? Yeah, that's a good question. Probably not because Lori Petty was originally cast as Huxley. Really? And apparently she and Stallone really didn't get along. Okay. Uh, they had some uh, some personality differences. Uh, they just they didn't work. And uh, even she says that her and Stallone were like oil and water. I, I could maybe see that. <laughs> yeah, and so she bowed out. And uh, producer Joel Silver uh, was recommended uh, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. And so they uh, they checked out her audition tape and they they, they hired her. And this is Sandra Bullock right at the beginning of her big career. Yeah, no, like this is a launching movie for her career. Well, I think next year when she stars in Speed. Yes. That's when it really starts. Oh, yeah, Sandra but the, you don't get the Speed without this one. Uh, possibly. Once Stallone was attached, he actually wanted Jackie Chan for the role of Simon Phoenix. Really? Yes, but Jackie Chan actually turned it down because he's played the good guy so much he wasn't comfortable playing a villain. Oh, okay. I I would really love to see him as a bad guy, though. That No, that would be <laughs> cool, but it's interesting that you bring that up because that, there is a nod to Jackie Chan in the film. Yes, yes, I, I noticed that, too, uh, when Huxley suddenly... Uh, <laughs> just de- uh, shows that she can defend herself. Yeah, and Spartan uh, a- asks, where'd you learn to kick like that? <laughs> Jackie Chan films. Jackie Chan huh. films. I'm like, nice, that was cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that had to have been put in there just because of that. I feel like a lot of lines in this film may have just kind of developed naturally. <laughs> a lot of improv. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, I think Wesley Snipes in particular uh, was was known for doing a lot of improv and stuff. And so I think they kind of let him, when he had to do his little crazy rants and things like that, that was probably a lot of Snipes. That was probably not scripted at all. Oh, no, um, sir. Oh, yeah, I could totally buy that because uh, given the nature of that particular character anyways, they probably just said, let's do a few takes where you just do whatever, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, you can uh you you find out that you can type on this keyboard and do all kinds of crazy things and go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know cuz that was some of the fun it, it, as he's discovering he has skills he's never known. <laughs> that that and, and his reactions to that. Eh, look at what I'm doing. <laughs> Just that stuff's amazing. Loved it. This film benefits from the time it was made as well because there are so much in the way of practical effects. Yes. That really help ground this film into like being still watchable. Mm-hmm. Um the uh the bungee jump from the helicopter. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a stunt man did that. He didn't use a bungee cord. Because they were afraid he'd bounce up and go into the blades. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they don't know how bungees work, but okay. <laughs> uh, they used something called a, a decelerator or something was used instead of a real bungee. Well, that would and explain he actually, yeah, why there was no recoil. Yeah, and he actually did that from about, uh, what was it, uh, about 300 feet <laughs> from a helicopter on top of a building. That's crazy, but I love it. <laughs> well, yeah, but but since we're talking effects here and practical ones at that, uh, the things that impress, so that, that the same building that he leaps into, they blow up. I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> they use practical effects for that. But then what's funnier is at the end of the film when we're, we're, we're basically blowing up the prison that they're, they're fighting in, um... It's clearly a model, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the flames shooting out of the side of it. I'm like, no one told you that fire has scale. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, you know, there's a moment in there. You're like, wow, toy boat moment. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. I didn't even really. It it didn't click for me. No, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, honestly. Because uh, and again, having a younger viewer along uh, who hadn't seen it, he's like, he's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> he's like. It's made out of cardboard. And you can almost see it. <laughs> like, I'm like no, and that's why it's fun. <laughs> yeah, but actually being able to uh, demolish a, a building, I think they used an old um, water and power building or something like that. That was, I guess, slated for demolition anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> the city, you're like, yeah, you want to save us of uh, <laughs> some money and do it yourself, please. <laughs> well. I, 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 but that's what that this is where this movie's kind of got its ass on first uh, cuz that's the bit that's the big explosion that's the one that just kind of levels everything and it's very dramatic and it's right at the beginning right <laughs> <laughs> like don't you usually save this for the end <laughs> well that's the end of the first film <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's that's the end of the short film. Yes, the, about the, Spartan and Phoenix. Great, we've got our trailer. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. The opening of this film, I feel it feels rushed. Like they're really in a hurry to get everyone to twenty thirty two. Yes, because the first what 10, 15 minutes of this film that take place in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. It is less like, oh, it's 1996. Oh, we got to go. There's a bad guy. Here's a chopper. Here's an explosion. Here's some gunfire. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're a bit on cocaine at that time. <laughs> yeah. You're too wild. You're under arrest. You did, I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah they, they, I mean, literally, John Spartan is hauled away, and we're only given a little snippet of, you're... You're too much trouble. And then, of course, he supposedly involved in killing all of the uh, bus passengers. So, like, no, nope, you're going to jail, too. See? <laughs> okay, yeah. that, that's... How does that compute? <laughs> Apparently, based on the word of the psychopathic... The, the, the psychotic killer that he's just arrested... No, he, he knew they were there. He said he didn't care. Yes. Oh, well. <laughs> well, and and this is where at least we'll we'll dig in a little bit about uh, past versus future. Uh, just in that little jump, ninety three, they're proposing ninety six, and, and I'm I'm like, wow, you had a l real high estimate of what L A was going to be like three years later, <laughs> and, and then on top of it, we've already moved to cryo freezing all of our prisoners. I'm like, gotcha, <laughs> yeah. That was a bit of a leap. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, all, all, everything else in, in the scene was fine, but I'm like, really? Okay, well, all of the city's on fire, and, and we can freeze our prisoners. Yeah, they turned L.A. into something uh, more similar to, like, Escape from New York. Right. Yes, yeah. <laughs> or maybe there. Escape from L.A. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so, somewhere around the corner, uh, there was... a. Uh, uh, what was the character's name? Snake, Snake Plissken. Snake, Snake Plissken. Uh, that almost would have been funny if you had seen Stallone run in one direction and Snake in the other. <laughs> See you, man. <laughs> yeah, so they didn't paint a pretty picture yeah. for L.A. Uh, although I think, didn't I read that they based it off the, uh, the L.A. riots that had just taken place, not that far in in the past yeah they just uh postulated that they just keep going <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's exactly what it was yes but the cryogenic freezing yes i'm not sure why they thought we would have those in three years that technology in three years yeah not to mention not just cryo freezing successfully your prisoners but you're going to rehabilitate them in ice yeah by providing um subliminal training and 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 teaching yes uh, why they're frozen yes interesting idea but but only three years after you made the movie okay yeah sure why not but he wakes up in the 2032 and and this is where it's like this film is definitely a bit fantasy mm -hmm. so we're only 40 years you know in the future from the time that the film takes place and 
I get that there was at least you know one major earthquake yeah. in 2010. 2010, they mentioned that a couple of times. The earthquake. Yep. But why society changes that much in 40 years? It it almost feels like a um, this, the type of society you expect from like a uh, a Buck Rogers. Oh, he's been asleep for 300 years, yes. and then he comes and yeah. Yeah, and you wake how, up how in different. a utopic society. Yeah, exactly. I I just don't know about the uh, only 40 years to change the society that much. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that too. It's same with how I was uh, put off a bit by the whole the cryo freezing and stuff. That was only three years, but you know, at their accelerated time rate, then then the 40 maybe makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Maybe we'll call this alternate reality. There you go. Yeah, we don't know what Earth this is on. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Although, watching the film now and watching all of the, uh, oh, we don't really like, you know, actual physical contact and everything. After having come out of a pandemic, mm-hmm. it sits a little differently. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I hadn't actually thought of it that way, but yeah, I can see that. Yeah, like yeah, I kind of I kind of see this now. <laughs> uh, it, it, well, and since they were they've kind of uh, um, forbidden uh, touching more or less uh, for various reasons, um, <laughs> it does bring up some interesting notions that you uh, uh, they they made this one comment and sitting in this the world we live in right now. Uh, they, they said it very quickly and then caveated heavily right after they said it. They had done away with an abortion. They said that super quick and, and then followed that up. But you're also required to be licensed to be a parent. <laughs> like, yep. And I'm like, okay, I could, get, I could get on board with those ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's listing all the things that's now illegal and going, oh, of course, abortion's illegal. Uh, but so is pregnancy, <laughs> unless you have a license. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. And that was a great way to turn that on your ear. I'm like, yeah, you can get behind uh, total abolition of abortion if you also make it illegal to get pregnant. I was watching the film, and they're talking about, uh, you know, they have the morality um, mm-hmm. alerts. Uh, you're getting, you get <laughs> fined for, for, for cursing. For every curse. Yeah, the, all the things that are bad for you are illegal now, so there's no salt, there's no smoking, and I, I kind of chuckled. She said chocolate, and I got upset. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of chuckling, and I thought, you know what? This is the world that conservatives think liberals want. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, because the world most liberals want is the one that was living below ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually want the scrap <laughs> society. It was kind of genius putting Dennis Leary in that particular. Yes, role. yeah, I didn't mention him, right? But yeah, ha- having him rattle off all the things, all all they wanted, it was basically think on their own and be able to do most of the things that they want to do. <laughs> right. Jumping back to the cast. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, Stallone and Snipes are just. You know, this is prime Stallone and Snipes. Yes. 90s, they, they, you just don't get any better than they are right here as far as in, in their careers. Uh, Sandra Bullock, considering that she is, I mean, she, did, she had done a few films and some television prior to this. This is really her first big ma- major motion picture. Yeah, the, the, this is her first uh, summer blockbuster kind of thing. Yeah. It, she holds her own. Oh, Absolutely. You'd never look back at this film and think that this is early Sandra Bullock. This is just, it's Sandra Bullock. Yeah. I mean, she hit the ground running. No, absolutely. And there's a reason she became a star very quickly. Um, but yeah, because I mean, that's half the reason right there to watch it, aside from the fact she's just adorable. But she is <laughs> funny as hell. And <laughs> yeah, she's great. Her comedic timing is awesome uh, and and. The way that she plays this character so enthusiastic, but dripping for just a little bit more in life. <laughs> I think her character is maybe a little 
uneven in the way that she was written as far as her uh, her knowledge of the 20th, yes. as they kept putting it. You know, she got a lot of, whenever she tried to use some uh, uh, colloquial sayings and everything, oh, you really licked his ass, <laughs> and, you know. And that kind of stuff. But then when they come up to the, the old car and an Oldsmobile 442 with a 420 and she rattles off all the specs and everything. I'm like, really? You, you, by sight, you know exactly what this car is, but you can't say, you, but you, you tell someone, well, I guess he really meat is matched or something. <laughs> okay. Are you saying there are things? Matched is meat. <laughs> Are you saying there are things that you like where you you aren't fixated on a particular part that you like and you've neglected some of the rest? (laughs) If you want to use that as the excuse, fine. (laughs) (laughs) And I do because I I just like Sandra so much in this. (laughs) How dare you disparage her? (laughs) Or at least her writing. (laughs) Not, Not her writing even. Aside from the fact that the, the society is a little far-fetched and unbelievable, it's still a, a fantastic society to play in. Oh, yeah. No. I, it, they had so much fun with it, and they knew. Ex- I think they knew that they were writing a kind of a ridiculous society, and they decided that, yeah, let's make sure we point that out <laughs> and, and poke fun at it every chance we can <laughs> yeah it's kind of like if you take the it's a small world ride and made it a society <laughs> i did point out it was something you had actually mentioned i think the, uh, the last episode we talked about uh you mentioned something about taco bell yes and i i, I said we'll probably have something to talk about that yeah <laughs> yeah because in i think Pretty much all the home video releases and streaming releases that you're going to find these days, it's Pizza Hut. Yes. And Isn't I, that interesting? I was stunned <laughs> when that came up. I, um, well, it's curious. What did you watch it on a month ago? Uh, that was when it was on HBO Max or max at the time but i watched it right off of max at the time and that one was taco bell really oh interesting and then a copy a friend of mine has that i watched which i learned was part of an international release yes that's when everything changed to pizza hut in fact i texted him immediately to go what the hell is this because i was so upset i'm like you're killing the joke a little backstory uh they they wanted to do something with this whole the idea you know the fast food wars yeah and they wanted a victor yes they approached burger king yeah that was a the original uh idea to be the winner of the restaurant wars but they and mcdonald's they weren't interested in being part of the film they said no weird taco bell was more than happy to be involved However, when it came to releasing the film in Europe, Taco Bell really wasn't known no. outside of North America. So another restaurant that PepsiCo, who owned both Taco Bell and Pizza Hut at the time, yep. was used. And that's so they went and and relooped dialogue. So everyone says Pizza Hut, and then they visually obscured any Taco Bell logos, replaced them with the Pizza Hut logos. Which they, well, one, they look like hell, but uh, they, um, they also didn't fully pull it off because while I'm watching the copy and I am thrown by the fact that I am hearing Pizza Hut come out of his mouth, <laughs> um, when they get to the restaurant for the first time and they have put this really stupid rectangular Pizza Hut logo over what was the Taco Bell bell uh, sign Mm -hmm. before. And and I'm like, oh, man, what the hell? And and, and then they start to pan across the restaurant. And there's a a thing that they couldn't take out of the film. And they had the Taco Bell bells etched into the glass on the restaurant. Ah. And so 
those are still there. So you can see them. And then when you get inside the restaurant, some of the employees in there are also wearing the bell. Oh, <laughs> nice. And, and I'm like, okay, so I'm not nuts. I just I wanted to make sure I didn't go stroke out for some reason. See, I didn't realize there was still a, a U.S. and European versions floating around. I thought that when it came time for like uh the dvd and, yeah. and that sort of stuff they all went with the international dub just because it's easier to have one yeah no i i get that but no that apparently not entirely the case because when, when the actual u.s content ran on max it was the original it had the taco bell in it Nice. Interesting. I was almost kind of glad that the one I watched was the international because it was just so much fun. To, just for little split seconds of a time, it suddenly turns into like some old Kung Fu picture. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the dub in is not good. <laughs> well, I think that the, the sound is right. It may actually even be the actors, oh. but it definitely doesn't match anybody's <laughs> mouth movement. Well, well no, because those... T- the mouth movement to make Pizza Hut and Taco Bell are way different. <laughs> Those consonants don't line up. So. Talking about uh, things and technology and right and wrong and everything, yep. uh, the fact that all there are so many Oldsmobiles rolling around in 2032 didn't hold up terribly well. <laughs> no, not... Not so much, but, you know, alternate, alternate world kind of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, that, that was that's not great. Um, but I did like the little nod to Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yes, that was hilarious. And that was really funny. They made this joke about Schwarzenegger becoming president. Right. <laughs> and then, actually, that was before he, becomes he governor. ran and, and became governor of California. <laughs> Yes, no. And, and it was still a fun scene anyways, because watching John Spartan take issue with Schwarzenegger's name being mentioned, uh, <laughs> no, knowing a little tit for tat with Schwarzenegger and Stallone is just like, that was cute. I like that. That's still fun even today. Yeah, that that was a really fun little uh, little joke and, and a ribbing for, for both Schwarzenegger and Stallone. And I almost think that was like, I, I could imagine, and I would fully believe that that was Stallone's idea. <laughs> oh yeah, no, because I, I, I get the impression they like each other fine, but they oh absolutely they're, con- they're always in constant competition, especially through the eighties and the nineties. That was when it was thick. That it, it, okay, we're gonna have an action film. Which one of the two do we want? <laughs> so right, yeah, it's usually how that went. <laughs> But no, yeah, the notion that they, uh, while not President Schwarzenegger, but he did become governor, and honestly, if the amendment wasn't in place, like they did mention in the movie, Schwarzenegger probably would have run for president. Uh, That actually, and a Schwarzenegger amendment was kind of uh, brought to the table. There was talk of, of trying to do something for that very reason. Right. And whether you agree or not, that, that, that hit awful close to their predictions. <laughs> so, <laughs> not bad. Yeah, no, that, that wasn't bad. A lot of the tech wasn't bad either. Video phones. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, they, granted, they did it a little more complicated with a conference room, but Zoom calls. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing in that conference room where there was all the, uh, the seats with all the individual screens. I'm like, wow, that is a big prediction of telepresence right there yep that uh, electric cars um, yeah stun weapons <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah 93 that wasn't common <laughs> i think there was the uh the scene where uh a spartan has his accident and the safety foam fills the car yes to protect him and i remember and i immediately thought you know what in the early 90s, airbags were only really becoming a, a thing in automobiles. Yeah. They'd been around for ages, but it was only in the late 80s and early 90s that they were becoming like standard equipment right. on automobiles. Well, and, it, 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 and then uh, you might only get the driver's side airbag right. uh, at best. And 
well, we're at least up to almost full curtains. It's not <laughs> instant styrofoam encasement, but right. but we're we're probably not far away from something a lot more like that. Yeah, so I kind of think that that was a. Uh, I could see where someone, you know, bought their probably premium automobile that came with an airbag, and just kind of took those next couple steps and came up with something like safety foam. It's like you know, I see that evolution. Well, not to mention we're talking about their future is still eight years off of us. Mm-hmm. In eight more years, who's to say? I mean, also, they they were talking self-driving vehicles. Next eight years, that's going to be a lot more than it even is now. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think they definitely kind of, uh, I think, likely uh, predicted a lot of very potential uh, future tech. Yeah, no, they did. I, they did an amazing job if it weren't just for the uh, constant... Uh, uh, lots of CRT monitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They yeah, were everywhere, cool. all over that precinct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they couldn't quite... Uh, well, how do you, you know, even if you think up high-definition, flat-screen, how can you kind of pre- display and show that when your your technology literally isn't there? Right, well, the Fahrenheit movie gave it a shot. <laughs> they tried, yep. yeah. There was at least a good flat screen, I don't know. You yeah, know. no, but I mean, they, they at least found a way to represent what they were ho- hoping to predict. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you rattled off a, a lot of the other technology and everything that was there, and um, yeah, it, it strangely enough, for a film like this it was actually kind of impressive with how close it it came to a lot of things still waiting to learn about the three seashells though i still would love to know how the three seashells work (laughs) (laughs) Uh, like like i've done no research into the development of this project but i'd like to think uh the writers themselves don't know that's part of the joke (laughs) I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And I love it for it. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder if the three seashells is going to maybe I think that's probably a, a little bit of the technology that's probably going to stay on in this new society after at the end of the film. Oh yeah, yeah, after. And uh, since, since we're on to talking about the end of the film, yes, the three seashells will hang out, but you got to love the kind of Pollyanna-like a- a- ending. We, we've we had the big fight scene. Um, everybody that was mad is now not mad. Uh, like Oh, it was such a Trek ending. It, this was like T- this was TOS Star Trek. You could have easily put William Shatner as Captain Kirk in the Spartan role. And he was like, well, you'll just have to dirty up and you'll just have to clean up and, well, somewhere in between, you guys will figure it out. And, and then I'm Beat out. me up, Scotty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, me and my chick, we're hitting it. <laughs> yeah, no, Absolutely. That, that, <laughs> that ending. But given how goofy the movie actually is, that was kind of the perfect ending. <laughs> no, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyable. I mean, this is just, it's a fun film to watch. It is. It absolutely is. And it, even more fun is, you know, this is a 1990s film, <clears throat> and we've we've watched a few, and I'm sure we've watched films that we haven't talked on the podcast, but we've watched some films from this era, and we watch them now, and there's lines and jokes and situations where we go, ooh. <laughs> 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 that didn't age well. Yeah, no, this one I, ages nicely. It does. There's really nothing in here that you just you you. There's nothing cringeworthy. No, what was uh, what was funny when they made it is it's still funny. <laughs> I think the, um, the only thing they really got wrong is Jeffrey in this in this world. Jeffrey Dahmer survives to 2032 in cryogenics. Oh yeah, yeah. And he, he he actually died in ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of kind of didn't go their way, but hey, they were on to something. <laughs> uh, 
There's one thing I, I, I just because this is a ridiculous film, one of the things that happens through this is it sticks in my crawl, but kind of in a funny way. It, it is that notion our our hero Spartan, our villain uh, Simon. They're great fighters. They're fantastic shots with their weapons. Except when the script says not to. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. They're you know what? I ran bullets in various scenes and, and they're not hitting a damn thing. But uh, but if you need to make a point, uh, all of a sudden Spartans are sharpshooters shooting over Cocteau's shoulder at, at the thing that's giving him a ticket for swear. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's still go together. <laughs> yep. No, I noticed that too when they're like having the shootout in the museum and no one can hit a damn thing <laughs> until Spartan gets the idea of shooting the light that's going to bust the glass. <laughs> yeah. No. Now, now all of a sudden he can hit something that's uh, about a quarter inch thick <laughs> and, and, and at least a uh, uh, fifty feet all away. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, uh, he can't take a machine gun, spray it across the room, and hit the guy. <laughs> and same with Phoenix. Yep. Yeah, he's 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 a dead shot whenever he needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> but if he's trying to shoot at Spartan, all of a sudden he can't hit anything. <laughs> no. Even when uh, because the 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 real killer on that one, um, no pun intended, is we're at the climactic battle. And Spartans caught in the in the little vice grip of the uh, of the ice picker upper thingy, and, and so it, essentially it's uh, playing the claw game. He's stuck. Phoenix has his machine gun, and he's spraying bullets at it at the claw, and he's not hitting Spartan at all. And the claw keeps even getting closer to Phoenix. At one point, he could have just reached out and smacked Spartan. He still couldn't shoot him. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, now, well, I'm comfortably in the early 90s right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That is 80s and 90s action movie rules right there. Yeah, that, that kind of crap won't fly today <laughs> quite as much. So, um so yeah, watching that again, that's the one thing that will stick in my crawl. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but it's still, oh, it's still a fun ride. <laughs> it's absolutely a, a fun ride. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to mention or, or say about it? Nah. I mean, it is, it's just it's a fun film. I it, it's one of these movies where we can sit here and just keep gushing, but we're going to start repeating and start quoting lines. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, <laughs> and, and and well, that's what makes it, it, it. It's the kind of movie that can live on uh, replay in your head. There's a reason I just watched it just for the hell of it a month ago, and then happily sat down and watched it again for this. Yeah. So. If you've not watched Demolition Man in a while, man, do yourself a favor. You know, whether it's U.S. or the international, <laughs> I think the international's fun. But you know, you you be the judge. Yeah, no, just know that they both exist and uh, are, are are quirky in their own right. <laughs> I, th I forgot to throw it out on social media uh, just because yeah. of all that drama that I was talking about earlier. Yep, and um, so yeah, I. We really didn't get any comments. I threw it out literally the day that we were going to record. And outside of just a, a couple of comments about, oh, that's one of my favorites. And um, Taco Bell. <laughs> 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 to which I replied, or Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we did not get any uh, comments or anything for the social media. I think it, had I remembered to put it out sooner, we might have gotten yeah. something for this one. Maybe we'll have to touch on this uh, in the next if we get comments. <laughs> if we um, if we get anything between now and when I edit and, and publish this episode, I'll place it in here. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> but what did the critics think about this thing in 1993? Uh. <laughs> Now, if I go with the overarching uh, Love Metacritic site for that, too, um, if you go for the overarching thing, they didn't like it. 
Really? As a whole, there. But here, let me read you from some of the top stuff first. Uh, from Empire, and there's just a staff writer listed. Um, if there was, if ever there was a movie equivalent to the one night, to the one night stand, this is it. Not necessarily something you'll remember next day, but fast, furious, and damn good fun while it lasts. <laughs> okay, interesting. So it's. Not good, but it's a lot of fun. Is that what he's? What it is is he's saying not they, from their perspective. It's not memorable. I, I, I time think did I'm, not go with them on that comment. I, I think I'm evidence that that's not entirely true. <laughs> and, and I think if we actually hear from some some of our listeners, I imagine that's going to track. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, and then we go to Teevan Guide, also another staff writer. Um, the pleasant surprise about Demolition Man is that both the script and Stallone are funny. The <laughs> film blends big budget action and tongue in cheek humor in the way that Last Action Hero tried and failed to do. Well, we ah. are in a little bit of disagreement on that point. I think you're going to find down the line that's kind of how this is going to go. Um, somewhere in the middle, um, and uh, because I had learned that uh, apparently Warner Brothers at, at release did not choose to do a screening session for most of the press. So most of the press came at this well after the fact. So uh, that said, I managed to find a Siskel and Ebert episode. <laughs> Our next movie and our next film is called Demolition Man with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. It's been in release, as you probably know, for a few weeks, but we're just catching up with it because Warner Brothers didn't want to screen the picture for us uh, before its opening or for, uh, I guess, a lot of the press. We recently returned from vacation, so now we're just getting to it. And although I can't exactly recommend Demolition Man, it does have a funny offbeat script. The year is 2032, the place Los Angeles after a big earthquake and violence has been eradicated in a new totalitarian state, but the piece is broken by a criminal from the 90s on the loose. Wesley Snipes recently thought out after having been on ice for 40 years in a cryogenic prison. We're police officers. We didn't train to handle this kind of violence. Also thought out is Sylvester Stallone, a tough cop from the 90s. He and Snipes have a history together. I tracked that dirt bag for two years, and when I finally bring him down, you turn me into an ice cube for my trouble. The romantic interest is provided by a police officer played by Sandra Bullock, but times have changed in the more high-tech 2032. There you go. Let it flow. I just relax. I'll be getting a few seconds. Begin what? Having sex, of course. <laughs> the violence in the film is routine, but the script by Daniel Waters and Robert Renault and Peter Lenkov is sprinkled with some smart gags about the 90s made from the vantage point of the 21st century. I didn't care at all about the mano a mano between Snipes and Stallone in this picture, but when they weren't fighting, I did smile a lot during Demolition Man. I smiled a lot too. In fact, I'm giving this film thumbs up. Okay. And uh, the reason for that is that unlike so many other movies in this genre, it really does have a satiric angle yes. to it. It is really trying to be funny, mm -hmm. and it's really trying to comment on the 90s from the right. point of view of the future. And it does so successfully. In fact, that new world, the brave new world of right. uh, post-apocalyptic California is funny in its own right with the way that people live and they're always smiling at each other and everybody's so happy. And it's, it's what life would be like if smiley faces really took over yeah. society and everybody became a smiley face pod person. That part, well, you know, you said basically the same thing I'm saying, which is that part is very funny. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it does have the action material and none of oh, that well, works the action, at all. Oh, come on now, come on. Now, the action material is pretty high tech. The special effects are pretty good. I didn't, I didn't uh, think, the, I didn't, that's the, where we differ. The fight out at the end, the whole business of the guy who gets frozen and then he's able to be shattered and stuff like that was that, okay for this kind of movie. That uh, I didn't work for me, but the, the smiles and the laughs are there. Okay, when we come back, Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson revisit old memories in the remains of the day. Interesting. I'm surprised. I thought this would be like kind of enjoyed across the board. But even you know, even some of the ones that didn't like it, it's they 
they still in sounds like a lot of a few of them anyway yeah enjoyed it yeah it's one of those where and here it's you gotta dial yourself back to 1993 anyways and I don't know what's all available in the moment, but maybe at wherever this sat for most of the critics, it just didn't sit in the right time. And it's we always go over various movies that critics just, this will go nowhere, nobody will like this, yada, 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 and they're the, the cult classics of the world. <laughs> and that's kind of what this one is for a lot of people, I imagine. People go back to some of these critics a little bit like MST3K did to Leonard Malton about Laser Blast. <laughs> yes, love that sequence where they were reading off other movies that he thought were the same amount of stars that he gave <laughs> Laser Blast. And like one of them was Kramer versus Kramer. <laughs> well, because he gave it like three stars or something. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, only, only half a star better. <laughs> And laser blasts. <laughs> so yeah, critics and their inconsistencies will make you laugh. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to years down the road, uh, coming up with some film that turns the, into the like the next cult classic, and I'm going to be dialing up uh, my friend Barry Worst and go, "Hey, remember that movie you didn't like?" <laughs> <laughs> It, I, I noticed that it's having its 40th anniversary uh, special edition release today. <laughs> Depending on how long we do this, I may be able to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think that's going to do it for Demolition Man. I, did, you finished your reviews, yeah? I did, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just couldn't help but keep laughing. <laughs> uh, I'll such a fun time it is not going to be decades before i watch this film again no. um i may need to add this to my actual library i think well if you have by chance saw demolition man and did not get a chance to comment it because of my negligence in, <laughs> in posting about it please drop us a line at timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com or follow the link tree link in the show notes to all their social media sites and Find out where I did comment or just go ahead and just drop me a DM or something. Let us know your thoughts on that film. Next time, oh boy, yeah. I don't know. Way We're different direction. Uh, talk about, a, yeah, we, this one may give us whiplash. <laughs> We're going to go back to 1981 for a film neither one of us have seen. No. Uh, it is a comedy. It is set in the year 1995, and it is a film called Heartbeeps. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I don't know what to really expect from this. Uh, this is either going to be a lot of fun or it's going to be painful. <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be an in-between on this. Yeah, and Randy Quaid is in this. <laughs> well, we have got a fantastic cast in this one. Mm -hmm. For anyone who's not familiar with the film... Andy Kaufman, Bernadette yep. Peters, Randy Quaid, uh, Christopher Guest, Dick Miller. <laughs> I'm really curious to check this thing out. And, and if you've never heard of this thing before with that cast in it, it may speak to what the quality is for this thing. Yeah, possibly. We could be dragging this thing up out of the muck and people going, oh, I remember that film. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have, please tell us all about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious to see if we get any comments from the social medias on this one. If you're the one person who has seen this film, please contact us. At <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it. We'll talk to everybody in a couple weeks. Bye, everybody. See ya.